that is Sa'at ibn Mu'adh. Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh, radiallahu anhu wardah, from the mighty companion. Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh, if we talk about him, we talk about not just only a companion, we talk about a warrior, a warrior, we talk about a leader of his tribe, we talk about a person whom Allah Azza wa fulfilled his supplication in more and then on one occasion. Uh, Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh, he is Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh ibn Nu'man ibn Umri al Qais al Ashali al Ausi al Ansari. So he's from the tribe of Ashal, and that belongs to the Aus, and the Ansar are either Aus or Khazraj. He is the one who is the master or the chief of al Aus, and he had embraced Islam before the migration of the Prophet وسلم, on the hand of Mus'ab ibn Umayr, who has been sent by the Prophet of Allah. When Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh he embraced Islam, he stood before his people, his tribe, and his tribe numbering of hundreds. And he said to them, O oh, Ban Mu'ad al Ashal, he's calling his tribe, what do you say regarding myself? They said, Verily, you are our master, and you are the best amongst us. He said, Verily, that is, your words are to be unacceptable to me, whether they are men or women, until you believe in Allah and His Messenger. So, Wallahi, he said, uh, the narrator, none of the people of the Bani Abdul Ashal had uh, stopped, you know, the Shahad or, or uh, hesitated to embrace Islam after that talk of Sa'd ibn Mu'adh, that, has he, that how has he, he was respected amongst his people. So all of them, men and women, male and female, they have embraced Islam, all the Alps, from a word from their tribe, from the head of their tribe, that is Sa'd ibn Mu'adh. And I'll tell you what, except for one man, and his name is Usayrin. And Usayrin, he was seen in the Battle of uh, Uhud. And uh, he was the only person who did not embrace Islam. But he was in the Battle of Uhud on the side of the companions. And when he was killed, his companion said to him, What brought you here? He said, Well, you're after Wubuti. He said, No, I embrace Islam. So he's the only one who had embraced Islam and he did not pray a single prayer. And he's in Jannah. And the Prophet said, Usayrim fil Jannah. He just embraced Islam and then he went to Shahada and he was a martyr. Anhu so all the Aus had embraced Islam. Remember the Khazraj from them, Abdullah ibn Ubayd ibn Salul, the hypocrite. So uh, uh, Al Aus, all of them embraced Islam, the Khazraj, not all of them. Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, when we talk about him, we talk about his virtues, number one. In terms of his virtues, a number of many. Number one, that his supplication was responded to by, the, by Allah, the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, uh, can be seen um, in the story of Banu Quraydah. You see the Jews who are Banu Qaynuqa, Banu Nadir, Banu Quraydah. Uh, Banu Qaynuqa and Banu Nadir, they were expelled from the Medina well before Banu Quraydah. Banu Quraydah were the last. And they had a treaty with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After the Battle of the Trench, uh, Banu Quraydah proved to be treacherous and they wanted to side with the people of Quraysh in order to kill the Muslims and the Islam. And that is why the, uh, the contract and the covenant was breached and they, the Prophet of Allah وسلم, had to do something. So when the battle of the trench took place, uh, one of the kuffar had threw an arrow uh, onto Sa'd and he hit him in his helm and it hit him in a, a vein which is a, uh, like a fatal one. His death will take place. So what Sa'd ibn Mu'adhi said, because he had heard the Jews, whom they were surrounding the Medina, remember before the Prophet of Allah migrated to Medina, the Jews, they were the brothers of the Ansar, Aus and Muhajirun. So they together, they had even you know, married from each other. So because they had betrayed, Sa'd was not really uh, happy with that. He was so enraged. So he said, oh Lord, don't make me to die until you make me happy regarding the fate of Banu Quraidah. That means you make me to see Banu Quraidah is going to be punished for their treachery. So he made that dua as soon as he made it. His blood was gushing out of his arm, which is a fatal injury, as I said, stopped gushing. Because of that dua, because of that supplication. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Went back to the, you know, to the Medina, when he did the trench, the trench is at the outskirts of the Medina. He went to the Medina, 
he commanded for Sa'd to be treated in the masjid. So he made a, like a, he commanded for a leather tent to be set in the masjid where Sa'd will be treated. And when the Prophet of Allah, he laid down his arm, Jibreel salam came. And he said, did you lay down your arm? Lay down your arm? He said, yes. So well, the angel, they said, Messenger of Allah, as we, the angels, we did not do so. We're going to go to Banu Quraidah because they were treacherous. So he said, go out and fight the people of uh, Banu Quraidah. So the Prophet ﷺ, he put back his arm, his clothes for arm for, for war, and he left behind Jibreel ﷺ. And Jibreel said, passed by people. The Prophet Allah, he asked the people, did you see anybody passing by you? He said, yes, we saw Dihya al-Kalbi. Dihya al-Kalbi is the Prophet Sallam. He said that he is the uh, Jibreel. He looks like him. He looks like him. So he knew that Jibreel, he passed there. So he said to the companions, nobody should pray the Asr unless he arrived in Banu Quraidah. So the companions left to Banu Quraidah. Some of them, uh, they saw that the sun is about to set. So they said, uh, we will pray before the sun set, some of them said, no, we should, to fulfill, we should fulfill the command of the Prophet of Allah. The Prophet of Allah said, don't pray Asr until you are in the place where Banu Quraidah. So those who had said that, they have missed the time of the Asr and they prayed the Asr at the Maghrib time. Whereas the first ones, they said, we will pray here because the Prophet of Allah, وسلم, he doesn't mean to take Asr outside his time. Which one do you think from the two groups is more correct. Both of them were correct, brother. But one was closer to the Haq than the other. Is it the one who fulfilled the command of the Prophet of Allah that he did not pray the Asr until they reach the land of Banu Quraidah and by this they have passed the time of the Asr until sunset? All those the ones who prayed the Asr, they were afraid that the time will pass, so they prayed it not in Banu Quraidah, just before they reached Banu Quraidah. Which one is more closer to the Haq? Hmm. We will pray the one who prayed, correct. The one who prayed the Asr. Even though they were both correct, which is the other one, they thought, well, they can't do the Asr until we reach Banu Quraidah. But the other one said, well, the Prophet doesn't mean that. You have to really go there, but it doesn't mean that we could really pass or push the Asr outside his time. Right. So the Prophet وسلم, he came to Banu Quraidah and he sieged them for 25 nights. After that, they had to surrender. When they surrendered, they, it was said to them, okay, do you accept the judgment of the Prophet of Allah? Abu Lubab ibn Abd al-Mundir, he said, it's going to be death. So they said, okay, we will accept the uh, command or the, the judgment of Sa'd ibn Mu'adh, which is the leader of Aws. They hoped he's going to you know, be lenient with them. They hoped he's going to do like Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salun, when the Prophet of Allah, he besieged as well Banu Qaynuqa, the Jews. Abdullah ibn Ubayn Salul, he came and he said, ransom them for me, Prophet of Allah. So the Prophet of Allah, he honored the word of Abdullah ibn Ubayn Salul and he gave them the Jews of Banu Qaynuqa and he let them go. So those people, they thought that Sa'd ibn Mu'ad is going to do the same like Abdullah ibn Ubayn Salul. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, okay, I'll accept to go and accept the judgment of Sa'd ibn Mu'ad. The Prophet of Allah, he sent for Sa'd ibn Mu'ad to come from the masjid. So he was carried on a donkey to show that how humble the companions are. Even as the head of the state, he was carried what? On a, on a donkey. He was carried on a donkey and uh, the, the tribe of his, the tribe of Sa'd ibn Mu'ad, they started reminding him, they are our brothers, the Jews, remember? That we have, you know, some sort of marriage in between us. So don't forget that. So he didn't talk to anyone of them. Then as soon as he got close to the tribe of Banu Quraidah, to the Jews, he said, Ah, it is time for me to say my word and I'm not going to have any worries regarding implementing the law of Allah Azza wa Jal. I will have no hesitation, no mercy when I'm going to implement. So what he did, he said, Verily, I judge for their fighters that is to be killed, and for their children and their wives to be slaverized. For their fighters to be killed. So any male who is above the puberty, he will be what? Killed. And else for the women and the children, they will be slaverized. So the Prophet ﷺ said, لَقَدْ حَكَمْتَ بِحُكْمِ اللَّهِ You have judged by the rule of Allah. 
rasulih and the judgment of his messenger. Allahu Akbar. And that is why Ka'b al Qurayy, one of the companions, said, I was one of those boys at that time in the Jews. And I was exposed to whether I'm adult or non adult. And the adulthood is, can be proved by what? Three signs for the male and four signs for the female. The three signs, which is a signs which are common between male and female, is number one, when he reaches 15 years old. Number two, that is the wet dream. Number three, that is the pubic cancer. He says, Ka'ab al said, I am one of the people who has been saved. I was burnt. And he embraced Islam. The children and the, and the women, they were slaverized. And when I say slaverized, slavery is not humiliation, by the way. Slaves is not human. It is another. It is a solution for war prisoners. The slavery in England, slavery in the West, it means number one, black Africa, number one. And by the way, slaves in Islam, most of them are white and blonde from the Romans. Number two, slave means that lashing, whipping. It means bad food. It means bad clothes. You dare to ride a horse. From your master, you dare you can eat with your master, all of that is rubbish. Islam honors the slave so much that Abu Huraira wished to be a slave, except because of three things he said, I would have asked to be a slave. Remember, Abu Huraira was a person from the people who are Ahl Sufa, and they used to be poor people. And when you become a slave to a master who is rich, you become rich. So the slave of the rich is rich. The slave of rich is rich. Abu Huraira said, had it been for the jihad and the hajj and the mother, I would have asked to, I would have asked Allah to make me a slave. Why the hajj and why the jihad and why the mother? Because you need permission from your master. If you want to make hajj, you have to have a permission. If you make jihad, you have to have permission. And if you want to be uh, joining or be dutiful to your mother, you have to have a permission. That is why he said, I would have wished to be a slave. A slave, if there's a chapter uh, for slaves in, for example, Adab al-Mufrad Imam al-Bukhari, in which the hadith, all, the, all of it talks about the etiquette of treating the slave. If you slap the slave, the only way to expect him is what? Well, he's sitting free straight away. You can't slap him. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, not be sort of feeling that disgusted to have the slave eat with you. So if you can't make him to eat with you, you at least you have to give him the food in your hand and present him. And you can't call your slave Abdi, my slave. Inama fatai, 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 my boy, not my slave. This is how the slave is being understood. When he's slaverized, don't ever think that they're going to be humiliated. So Sa'd ibn Mu'ad radiallahu anhu arda, he had made the rule. But anyway, this is one, he made the other supplication. And Allah fulfilled it for him. He said, O oh Lord, Allah man kunta qad abqayta. If you, Lord, he had left any war for the Prophet of Allah against the people of Quraysh, then make me to stay for that. Make me to live. But but if you have stopped the war between Quraysh and the Prophet of Allah, make me to die. As soon as he said it, Aisha, she says, that the wound that at the beginning he was so cured only a spot can be seen. Little spot. Soon as he said the dua, because there was no war left between the Prophet of Allah and Quraysh. There was no war. After that, the, 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 the repossession of Mecca. Because of that, all the, the, the whole blood, it just sort of gushed out. It just exploded. And he was returned back to that little tent in the masjid, and then he died. Aisha, she said, by Allah, I could distinguish the weeping, the crying of the Prophet of Allah from Abu Bakr from Umar. All of them were crying on Sa'd ibn Mu'ad. So what we said now, that the Prophet Allah Azza wa the Almighty, responded to the supplication of Sa'd on two occasions. And this is to show that these people, they are ruhama bainahum. The companions of the Prophet of Allah, they are merciful amongst each other. Muhammad Rasulullah. وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ أَشِدَّهُ عَنَ الْكُفَّارِ رُحَمَا وَبَيْنَهُ Right, now the other issue is that from his virtues that when he died the throne of Allah moved for him اِهْتَزَّ عَرْشُ الرَّحْمَانِ لِمَوْتِ السَّعْدِ لِمُعَى The throne of Allah had moved for the death of Sa'd but yet he was not released 
from the dhamma of the qabr, the squeeze of the grave. And he said, if anybody would be saved from the squeeze, it would have been what? Sad. But he was not saved from the squeeze. The schemes, everybody's going to get a squeeze. But the throne of Allah was moved to show and indicate that how close Sad and Mu'adh to the Allah, the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. From his excellence as well, that is when he died, Allah Azza wa sent angels. There were 70,000 angels who went down to, Jazakallah khair, to carry his janazah and to participate in his funeral. Those 70,000 angels, they never been sent down to the earth. It's for the first trip for them to the earth. First step for them to the earth. To carry and to participate in the janazah of Sa'd ibn Mu'adh When the hypocrites, they were participating, they said, Ma akhaffaha min janazah. It's light. That light ridiculing one. It's a light janazah maybe because it's not really good person. When the Prophet was told about this, he said, It is light because the angels were carrying it with them. They were carrying the janazah of Sa'd ibn Mu'adh uh, also, we find from his um, uh, 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 excellencies that regarding, this is a story, talks about the towels of Sa'd. The Prophet ﷺ one day, before silk was made haram to the men, he was being given a cloak, a garment, in which it was made of silk, and the silk is very what? Very soft. So, some of the companions touched that and they said, Oh, MashaAllah, it's really very soft, Messenger of Allah. He said, Atajabuna min dali? Are you really stunned because of this? It's so soft. Fawvali. He said, By Allah, Lamanadilu Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad fil Jannah ahsanu min mataraun. The towels of Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, they are better and more beautiful and more softer than these, and than this clothes. So, this is to show you that Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad is in Jannah. And it's a specialty as well. Now, also from his stands, we could say uh, that in the Battle of Badr, Sa'd ibn Mu'adh radiallahu anhu, in the Battle of Badr, you know, it was the first battle. And the Prophet, when he went out, he did not go to fight. And when he had taken as well the covenant from the Ansar, the Ansar they did not say, We're going to fight outside Medina. The covenant was that he will fight inside the Medina. But outside the Medina, they did not say that in the covenant. It does not say there in the, you know, the, 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 the contract or the agreement. So the Prophet ﷺ now, he is in Al-Udwa Al-Dunya, and they are in the Al-Udwa Al-Quswa in that valley. They don't know what to do. Shall he go and fight? So he's now conferring with his companions. So Abu Bakr stood, and he said, and he good, he says, also Umar Al-Khattab. And then Al-Miqdad ibn Amr. But all of those were the Muhajirun. Not from the Ansar. He said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, go ahead with what Allah had commanded you, for verily we are with you. We will not say to you like the people of Musa said to Musa, السلام, go and you Lord fight, for verily we are sitting here. We will say to you, go and fight. We will fight along with you. <laughs> verily, if you took us to the Barq al Ramad, that place, we will go and with you. Now, now the Prophet he said, Ashiru Ali. Still, he said, I want your consultation. As soon as he said that, Sa'd ibn Mu'ad being a clever man, he said, Messenger of Allah, it looks like you are meaning up, you are indicating that you want our opinion, the Ansar. He said, yes. He knows that the Muhajirun, they are with him all the time, but he wants the Ansar. Now, what are you going to say? Sa'd, he said, Very, we believe in you, and we had followed you, and we testify that whatever you have come up with, is the haqq and the truth. And we have given us, we've given you our word and our covenant that is to hear and obey. So go ahead, Messenger of Allah, to what you have intended to go to. For verily we are with you, by the one who sent you the truth. If you are to plunge into the sea, we will plunge with you. Verily, we will find no one will stay behind. And you will be, inshallah, happy because you will see that how truthful we are in the war, how firm we are in the war. When he said that, Prophet he said, Abshiru, I have gathered blood tiny. I could see the victory. So Salim Mu'ad, he says, go messenger of Allah. Go to the barakah of Allah Azza wa Jalla. We will be with you. So this is to show that is Salim Mu'ad, 
is representing a carriage of a leader and also the carriage of his followers from the Ansar. In the Battle of Uhud, radiallahu anhu, when we have uh, Anas ibn Nadr, the uncle of Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, Anas ibn Nadr is the one who was, mashallah, but that the day was the day of Talha as well. Anas ibn Nadr, he started fighting. And as soon as the battle turned the other way round, and if you remember Khalid Wali, what he had done, radiallahu anhu, before he embraced Islam, so the Muslims, they were running away, and the kuffar was coming towards them. Anas ibn Nadr, he went towards uh, the kuffar, and he said, O oh Lord, I've got nothing to do with these people, the kuffar. And, O oh Lord, I apologize on behalf of those people, the companions who will run away. And then, Sa'd, he's so sad. Sa'd, Riha al-Jannah, Inni la ajidu haduna Uhud. The smell of paradise, I could see it, and I could smell it through Uhud. And he started charging, until he was killed. Not only that, he was cut into pieces, he was being disfigured, so totally that no one had knew him except for his sister. She knew him from his fingers. Now, this is when Sa'd ibn Mu'adh, he went to the Prophet of Allah, he talked about Anas ibn Nadr, he said, Messenger of Allah, I couldn't do what he did. <laughs> I couldn't do what he did. Anas ibn Nadr, I couldn't do what he did. In terms of his loyalty, we said in the Ghazwat al-Uhu, Ghazwat Banu Quraydah, he was the Hadda Wala and Bara, he had nothing to do, no compromise. And finally we come to a story which is a story of Sa'd ibn Mu'adh, we could add another story as well. That is, Sa'd ibn Mu'adh, radiallahu anhu, when he made a Umrah, when the Prophet sallam, he was in Medina. This is a story that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he says, Sa'd ibn Mu'adh, he went to Umrah. And he went to Umayyah ibn Khalaf. And this is before the Battle of Badr. And Umayyah, every time he goes to Bilal al-Sham, he, if he passes by Medina, remember, Mecca is in the south, Medina is in the north, and then Bilal al-Sham is the north of Medina. So every time Umayyah ibn Khalaf, he goes in a caravan or trading, he would pass to, uh, if he goes to Bilal al-Sham for trading, he had to pass by Medina. So when he goes to Medina, he would come to Sa'd ibn Mu'ad and he would camp with him and he would be entertained as a guest. So Umayyah, he said to Sa'd, okay, if you come to make the Umrah, well, make sure that you know, you don't gonna be spotted by the chief of Quraysh, Abu Jahl. Because he doesn't want to you know, spot him and then there will be a conflict. So, he made his tawaf, and while he's making his tawaf, Sa'd al Mu'ad is being spotted by Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl is saying to Umayyah, who's this person who's making tawaf with you, Umayyah? So he said, Sa'd, ah, it's me, Sa'd. Abu Jahl, he said, you are making tawaf in the Kaaba, having security and safety, and you have given shelter to Muhammad and his companions? He said, yes. Then he started arguing with each other. And then Sa'd ibn Adi raised his voice so much onto or against Abu Jahl. So Umayyah, he said to Sa'd, don't raise your voice. For verily, he is the chief of this valley, that is Abu Jahl. So don't raise your voice. Sa'd, he said, Wallahi, if you prevent me to make the law from the Kaaba, I will prevent you to make your trading business to Bilal Sham. <laughs> this for that. So Umayyah, he was saying to Sa'ad, don't raise your voice. And he was holding him. And Sa'ad, he said, listen to me. Leave me from that person. For I've heard the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, saying that he will, you will be killed. He's talking about Umayyah. You're going to be killed. Umayyah said, you mean me? I'm going to be killed? He said, you, you're going to be killed. He said, by Allah, Muhammad does not lie. If he says something, <laughs> even though they don't really follow him. They don't believe him, but they know that if the Prophet of Allah said something, it will take place. So he went back to his wife, terrified. He said, did you hear what he said? My brother, that is Sa'd ibn Muhammad. He said that Muhammad is going to be killing me. I'm going to be killed. She said, well, if Muhammad said so, then it's going to take place. <laughs> Even his wife, he believes that. So, verily, when the battle of Badr took place, and now, Umayyad ibn Khalaf, he said, you remember? He's telling his wife. What my brother, Sa'd ibn Mu'adh said, I believe I should really stay behind. I'm not going to go to the battle. I'm not going to go to Abu Jahl and share with him. But Abu Jahl kept with him, how can you leave us? Just come and share with us one or two days and that's it. So he went, and when he went, he was killed. And who killed him? Bilal ibn 
Rabah radiallahu an and some of the companions along with him. When he saw him, Adu Allah, Lam Tafri Dhani Yadai. I mean, Allah, he's not going to run away from him. Remember, my Khalafi was the one who tortured him that much. So he was killed. So this is to show you some of the stands of Sa'd ibn Mu'ad radiallahu anhu arba. And by this, we come to a conclusion. Um,